Welcome back to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner Classics slash Non Classics. This is episode number 559 and double episode number 465. I have two Superman related trades. First up, it is Supergirl Volume 4 The Daughter of New Krypton. Collecting I issues 34 to 43 of Supergirl Volume 5. Yeah, the Supergirl volume from two volumes back, not the current volume that's about to end. All the issues in here written by the awesome Sterling Gates. And this is kind of how, this is kind of like this first major comic he did. He did this book for like a little over two years. And he is probably by far the longest writer who did this volume. Yeah, this volume lasted for a little over five years. The, start, the comic started back in 2006, and it was ended and relaunched in 2011. In a little over 60 issues, Sterling Gates is by far the only writer to stay on the longest. Stay on for approximately two years on this book. Yeah. Most of the stuff in here deals with stuff with new Krypton stuff. Like, well, there's stuff like... The death of uh, Agent Liberty, finding out about, well, there's also a story involving the character Superwoman. No, it's not the character from the the recent series by, originally by Phil Jimenez and Kate Perkins. This, this particular Superwoman was Lucy Lane. And I heard something that by the time this volume ended in 2011, there was more plans for her, but they were shelved due to New 52. Now, what do I think of this particular set of issues? These 10 issues, they're actually really good. Yeah, Sterling Gates had the book moving forward and had a good solid direction for it. And plus, he actually established something that actually lasted up until New 52, which was Supergirl's secret identity. Yeah, this was something that the writers of the book prior to Sterling Gates still coming on board, they struggled. Yeah, it seems like half the time, when, when you read this book, up until Sterling Gates ago, despite the fact that the writers are good, half the time they just didn't know what to do with Supergirl after Jeff Loeb left. Yeah, Loeb had an awesome run, but he left after doing five issues, which I'm like, that's stupid. Also, the artwork in here is done by a couple different artists on here. Uh, let's see here. The, the collection, this is Joshua Milden. Yeah, this is Joshua Milden who does the cover art for this thing. Now, these are who the artists are for these 10 issues. <laughs> for issues 34 through, excuse me, uh, 34 to 40, it's mostly Jamal Ingle who does the artwork. He does co-draw it with Ta Talent Codwell for issue 39. He does come back for the last couple issues, but he skips issues. He's, he skipped issue 41, but he does pretty much do all the issues in here. The only issue he does not do in here is issue 41. That's done by Fernando Deguino. Yeah. But when it comes to the new Krypton stuff, yeah. It's mostly stuff that happened with new Krypton, like... Now, some of you are probably curious, though, what was New Krypton stuff? It was a storyline that ran from 2009 to about 2010, where a bunch, where, and this was, this was, this was followed up what happened with the storyline Brainiac, which is done by Jeff Johns and John Byrne, awesome storyline, I recommend it, where Suitman defeated Brainiac and found uh, the Battle City Candor, and it was a bunch of Kryptonians, and they were restored to proper size. They were, well, the city was outside, was very near the Fortress of Solitude, and then after a very controversial thing where, get this, Metallo and Reactron, Reactron is a Supergirl villain, where they, where they attacked Kandor and killed Supergirl's father, Zarel. And they tried to go after him, and they inadvertently killed some people, and it started a war, and had all the Kryptonians, except Superman, had to vacate the planet. Yeah, I'm not really sure what was up with DC at this point, where they wrote it in-universe, where where Supergirl couldn't do pretty much hardly half the time, couldn't do anything on Earth because she's a Kryptonian. 
Superman they didn't have a problem with because it won't trust him. Supergirl had only been on the planet for just for a few short years, and they finally got something to do where they made her the adopt that made that her secret identity. She's Linda Lang. She is the niece of Lana Lang. It's by the fact Lana is an only child. And I thought this was a really interesting idea for this character. Now, in the aftermath of New Krypton, you had the storyline War of the Superman, which led right into that. Where, in that storyline, the whole New Krypton, the planet of New Krypton was destroyed, and most of the Kandorians were killed, Reactor was killed, and General Zod and his troops were sent to the Phantom Zone. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh yeah, and about partway through the series, Zod is basically knocked in the in the World of New Krypton series. That was a twelve issue Maxi series published at that point. Yeah, and Superman was basically there while in action comics that was taken over by Nightwing and Flamebird. These these were uh Chris Kent and a fellow Kryptonian. I don't remember her name, but she was a lover of his. And as for Superman, that was taken over by Monel. Yeah, for like a period of a year. Supergirl got involved with a couple of the crossovers. One, of course, was New Krypton stuff. The other was, I believe, well, yeah, it was uh, Codename Patriot. That was another crossover. That was a really good storyline. I thought it was interesting writing-wise. I just didn't like how, I think probably the biggest fault of this storyline is the fact that the main villain of the overall New Krypton stuff is General Lane. Yeah, very predictable. Very typical military, and I think that's the biggest fault of the story is the fact General Lane is basically the biggest paranoid, schizophrenic army man in the, in the DC Universe. Yeah. But despite that, this is really good. I get this book at 9.5 out of 10. Yeah, really good. As far as I know, the spark is still one more trade. He also did a couple annuals for the series. Which is something to help because, yeah, the the the, the previous flying Peter David did that did have a couple of annuals. So to this one, but some of the gates actually wrote those annuals. The previous one I think was Kay Perkins. Yeah, but the couple of annuals came in the first couple of years. Next up is Superman Volume Four Black Dawn, collecting issues of of the Superman's fourth volume. 20 to 26. This storyline was something that was building up in the pages of Superman's issue 1. And this was the biggest payoff for this storyline. Where it revealed that the entire, city, the entire city of Hamilton, all the citizens were aliens. Yep. And also there was this black goo going around. And it turns out this was run by, of all people... My, uh, Manchester Black, who looks completely different from his classic appearance. Let me show you what the guy looks like in here. Of course, Peter Tomasi does the writing with Patrick Gleason on the artwork. Yeah, and plus also they even threw in Batman and Robin the story, which they even threw a reference in here of what what's going on in the Super Sons, which is not a bad idea to do. Mm-hmm. Let's see if I can find it here. Oh yeah, and also reveals why John is not strong as he should be. Yeah, the reason is because of a milk Dave was given. Here is Manchester Black. Despite the fact last time he showed up was in the pages of Teen Titans. And he looked completely different. I don't get the redesign for this thing for for this guy. Okay. I'm glad they kept him. That, that he's a uh, he's a heavy, he's a heavy chain smoker like John Constantine is fine. Okay, his outfit in here is a black trench coat, black shirt, black pants, black boots, with a belt buckle of Union Jack. Which, when he first showed up, he wore a t-shirt with Union Jack on. He didn't wear a belt buckle. I don't really get the redesign for this thing. Yeah, it's so bizarre. Of course, Patrick Leeson is also the co-writer of this thing, along with Michael Marnar, uh, Masari, who does issue 26. 26 has nothing to do with this actual storyline. Black Dawn wraps up with issue 25. And for this storyline, be for everything for Superman leading up to this particular storyline, 
I gotta say, this is really good. Also, they even threw in Frankenstein's monster and his ex-wife, the bride. That was a little bit of a surprise. Heck, I, even to this day, even one year later after the storm that came out, I'm still a little perplexed. Okay, the last thing who showed up in this book was a quick little two-parter. This was before Multiversity. Now, the only thing that Hamilton... Now, apparently, the the aliens of Hamilton County, apparently they were behind everything going on in the Superman book, with the exception of what happened Frankenstein's monster and the Multiversity stuff. With the exception of those two things, they're basically behind everything. They basically knew that Clark Kent Superman, they pretty much knew everything. Uh, Kathy does constantly show up even after this, this storyline wraps up. Yeah, she even appears in the current storyline. And it's very heavily implied that John has a thing for Kathy. Kathy's grandfather is a farmer. And here's the thing about John. Prior to this, he had similar powers to Superman. He has pretty much most of his powers, except he couldn't fly. Yeah, he was very lowly. He was he was should be more powerful than Superman. This is according to Batman. And apparently Batman's doing research at this point for about almost a year. Now, the reasoning for John being not as powerful as she should be is because of milk he was drinking. The milk was basically from Kathy's grandfather, which kept him somewhat to power. Oh, yeah, and apparently Kathy's got powers too, which is interesting. Now, John is 10 years old, and he kind of has a. And Kathy is kind of supposed to be his girl. He's is, uh, kind of like a childhood sweetheart for him. And the whole point of issue 20 is just, well, John and Superman saving the day in another town. And that's really it. This is by far a really good storyline. Now, there is a couple more trades going to come out with Pierre J. Tomas and the writing. But after this one, I think it's like one more after this one. Because here's kind of the thing after the, the wrap of the storyline. Up until, up until they did the Super Sons and Tomorrow storyline, it's kind of like the book went through a series of filler writers. I don't know why in the world Peter J. Tomas they did this for, where probably because he's busy with Super Sons, he's like, okay, I guess I wanted to get this book off the f- several people for a few different storylines, like like for Kate Perkins doing a storyline involving Sinestro, even though that should have been for Colin Bunn. I don't know why Colin Bunn was in contact with that storyline, because after all, he was the last person to write Sinestro. And there was this two-parter involving Deathstroke. James Booney wrote that storyline, and that made perfect sense, because he has written him before. Kate Perkins has never written Sinestro before, and I can think of. But as for this, this is good. I give this a 9.5 out of 10. I'm sure my friend Tivia, who loves the period of Tomas for Superman, I'm sure he'll probably give this a 10 out of 10, or at least a 5 out of 5. That's what he'll probably do with this thing. But as far as I know, I don't think he's reviewed this one yet. I, mean, I think he's waiting for the lock session to collect this, these issues in it. It's like a different action comics. So, 9.5 out of 10. Alright, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode where I have two more Superman related trades in the next episode. The following one is going to be a Wonder Woman trade and it's going to be a single shot. That'll be episode 461. Next episode is 460. Double shot number... Excuse me. It'll be episode number... 466, okay? But until we see you in the next episode, bye.